Morning all. I'd like to look at the interesting game between Vichy Anand and Van Wheely played yesterday, 19th January 2013, in the Tatar still, we can see. So Vichy played e4, and Van Wheely played d5. This is an opening he's had some success with. I mean, he recently had uh, a miniature against a 2600 player. Uh, it's, it's a good surprise weapon, the Scandinavian center counter. Um, so, traditionally, it's losing tempo for the Queen. Is that an issue? Um, I'm, I'm recently thinking there's, there's an interesting perspective on issues generally, and it'll be interesting to see how this game falls in with the model, which I find is quite interesting. That if, if there is an issue, sometimes a player can make that issue worse, and there, there can be an element of rule breaking, which is then punished by so often forcing moves. So, there's four stages in there. In this opening, it is liable to have the queen as an issue, subject to harassment. After e takes d5, Van Wheely played queen takes d5. Obviously, it's it's um, a tried and tested system. So, is it really an issue in that uh, the queen can be kicked around rather simply? Well, the first move is is very simple: knight c3, queen a5, and Black's often getting a, a solid position. For example, bishop f5, c6, putting the queen back e6. And despite the loss of the time, it's a solid position, a bit like a, a Kara Khan type position, where you know the knight is blocking the c pawn, so breaks in the centre with d5 are less likely with c4 and d5. Uh, that's one feature for trying to exploit this issue of the queen, uh, you know, coming out early. Uh, the other issue from White's perspective is if the d pawn's moving, Black's often putting uh, pressure on d4 rather uncomfortably by getting the bishop out. Playing moves like this and casting queen's side, so it's interesting how that is dealt with, if if it's going to happen. So d4 is played here, and we see knight f6, which does support the move bishop g4 here. So if white routinely uh, just plays knight f3, as I say, there's a potential issue with d4 and the d file generally. Bishop g4 is perhaps an annoying pin. And say bishop e2, c6, um, or even knight c6 in this scenario, and then castling queenside could be um, potentially unpleasant for black. What we see here is actually white avoiding uh, moving the knight routinely. He actually plays bishop d2. Bishop plays bishop d2 here. The knight's not really threatening uh, anything at the moment of, of a big deal attacking the queen with this discovery, but it's getting out of the way um, a little bit of development, unpinning, uh, stopping moves like um, knight e4, not having that knight pinned. Okay, so we see the move now, bishop g4. Does white want to play a move like bishop e2 or knight f3? Well, Vichy actually chooses uh, f3. Now, ordinarily, F3 is kind of weakening this diagonal. You expect black to play actively to try and exploit this diagonal. But here, is black in actually in a position to try and exploit that diagonal? And furthermore, this pawn uh, does support this discovered attack idea on the queen, potentially. Or even just knight e4 generally could be uh, a useful idea to try and get both of these pawns in the center together as a nice central duo. So bear that in mind. Bishop d7 is played here. Interestingly, okay, so we could do a reference check after if the bishop could have moved to h5, or would it have been kicked around? Uh, you know, this something like g4 or h4 even to try and gain more space. But bishop c bishop back avoids those potential issues of the bishop being further harassed. Uh, it does mean the frontal pressure is delayed on d4 if black's going to later attempt frontal pressure. Okay, but here now, bishop c4, we are actually potentially now threatening knight d5. That bishop is supporting the d5 square. Knight d5 attacking the queen, attacking c7. Uh, needs to be dealt with here in some way. Black plays queen b6. And okay, he's attacking two pawns, and only one now is defended. So offering b2 as bait, it looks like a poison pawn, if ever there was one. And it's not taken. We'll check that out in the second pass. Uh, but it looks as though the queen's going to be in big trouble if it took there. At very least, white can even just uh, just take on b7, perhaps. 
So e6, and then we see the bishop dropping back. Okay. So knight c6, pressure on d4, that's protected. And now, maybe black thinks this is an opportunity, uh, that this bishop is an opportunity here, just a sitting duck to knight a5. Is it making black's position worse in some way to try and uh, exploit this perceived issue? Is is actually black's issues getting worse after knight a5? Well, the development of black, uh, you might not think um, it's it's such a problem here. This pawn is currently pinned anyway. There's no d5 threat, and even later there'll be bishop c5. If white castles kingside, the king on g1 would mean d5 bishop c5 is a resource. So d5 is not really on the cards at the moment. So does black have indeed time to pick up the bishop pair, which ordinarily is is a good idea. Uh, but it really depends how open the position is. These knights could be quite dangerous. Let's see, white just accepts that. He just castles, he gives up his light square bishop. So we see knight takes b3 here, and now a takes b3, a little bit of dynamism in the a file, the pawn coming towards the center. But uh, okay, what of this light square bishop? Is it a big deal here? Bishop e7. Okay, black's interested in castling king side, perhaps. So knight f4. Not threatening d5, still this pinned. Black castled. Rook e1. Again, d5, there's bishop c5 potentially because of the king on that sensitive diagonal. So not a problem at the moment, but in this position now, after rook f d eight, knight d three, finally the c five square is con contested here. D five does seem a serious concern now. There's no bishop c five resource. Where can the queen usefully go to here? Did black already play a slight inaccuracy? That's the other question with rook f d eight. If black wanted some more opportunities for the queen, maybe a c6 move earlier instead of rook fd8. Now here we see the queen going to d6. Okay. And you might think, well, is there really uh, a problem here with that? This next move, bishop f2, gives white some opportunities for harassing the queen, which are quite nice. There's the opportunity of knight e4. Or potentially uh, knight e5 to c4. Th there's various ways of trying to kick the queen around, trying to pick up at the same time some sort of positional advantage. But at the moment, this frontal attack is of interest to black on d4, and this next move shows that bishop c6. However, now knight e4 is a bit annoying to the black queen. If queen d7, knight e5, and if the queen goes back to d5, there's, there's always c4 as well. The queen's actually getting quite usefully harassed here. And in this position, it picks up a duo of pawns. Black maintaining the light square bishop plays just knight takes e4, but white has that central pawn duo, f takes e4. And now perhaps, I say perhaps, a perceived threat from the black perspective is white playing simply c4 and d5, which would extend the scope of this bishop quite nicely, get nice space in the center, and would seem to be quite a dangerous position. Especially, you know, bishop c5 might be a resource later to further attack the queen. And this looks a little bit of a panicky move. In that four stage uh, th theoretical idea that you're presented with an issue, and you might exacerbate it, you might make it worse than it needs to be. This move looks like a, a kind of Mr. Bean type move where the issue of c4 and d5 is made uh, significantly worse actually, potentially. But we'll, pr we'll try and show that in the second pass of the game. Again, c4 and d5, it looks like a panic, this next move. f5. In some respects, you might argue, well, the, the bishop's been extended in scope. Uh, getting rid of this duo is important. But uh, what about this pressure on the e file? What about the tactical opportunities uh, White will get on that e7 bishop potentially? White does take e takes f5, not minding the bishop being extended in scope. 
And you know, quite a significant part of this game has been getting rid of White's light square bishop. Uh, and maintaining this bishop and now extending the scope, it seems from one perspective it's all fairly logical black smooth, but now that you know this tactical vulnerability is raising its head after c four white is now threat to then d five and bishop c five just picking up that piece very dangerous, okay, so black looks to be in trouble queen d seven ninety five maybe where can the queen go to usefully um the queen moves off rook takes e seven if bishop f6, then maybe d5 is still strong. And these are things to check out in the second pass. Black plays bishop e4 now. And this starts to be quite nasty now after knight c5. It's it's a real tactical liability. There's a lot of pressure on that e file. And after Queen G6, White is now forcibly winning a pawn. So something has gone badly wrong. White plays Knight takes, F takes, and just Queen B1. Now Queen B1. If he had played Queen C2, I think that's a little trap. Just with E3 would be attacking the Queen, and then if takes E takes F check. So by playing queen b1, the queen is protected by the rook, and that pawn e e3 is not possible here. So sidestepping a little trap, and it looks as though white's going to be winning a pawn here. Black tries to counter attack on d4, but he is losing a pawn. Pawn down for not much, it seems. Van Wiley takes, and we see c6. Okay, a central pawn up is is not a bad pawn to have. There's also pressure on the A file, of course. Uh, it looks like a, a good position. Can White win it? King F1. The king comes to the center. A6 now neutralizing the A file pressure. The king comes to the center again. Not minding at any time C5. Maybe just D5, and that's a big pass pawn. White has complete control of the E file. And also c5 is of course a target here anyway, so it's pretty undesirable to do that. Rook a d8. The king now supporting d4 is, is a luxury here. Now rook a e1. White can just not worry too much about the d pawn right now. The king is being used much better than the opponent's king, of course. And the pawn up and control of the e file. Depressing position for black. King f7. And we see now bishop e3. What's the idea of bishop e3? Well, it means, for example, the f file can be used for a subject of operations. Maybe some space gains possible later with g4, g5, and using that f file. We see that this next move may be against g4, in fact, h5, discouraging g4, perhaps. Rook f1. King g6. Is the king safe there now? We see now b4, perhaps suppressing any c5s from black a little bit more, trying to lock down these pawns a little bit. Rook d6. And then we see h3. White is going for g4 anyway. It's going to be quite dangerous to get rid of this bishop eyeing d4 would free up white's position a little bit more. No, less responsibility for d4 again if this bishop can be dislodged. Rook goes back now, g4. So that g5 is coming in now. hg, hg. And faced with this g5 issue again, it's made the issue uh, model, it's made a little bit worse. I missed the bean again, you could say. It's made a little bit worse, which is a kind of rule breaking, which is punished potentially, theoretically, by a series of forcing uh, moves to deliver the punishment. So the issue of g5, is it made worse? I'm pretty sure it has been by this next move, rook f8, uh, which looks to be a neat tactical idea on the surface. Black's neat tactical idea was setting a kind of trap against the move g5, because bishop takes d4, leaving the rook and pre, rook takes, and then bishop c5 check, discover check, getting the rook back. A little neat tactical trick based on that d4 being slightly vulnerable and the king on d3. But 
as I mentioned, the issue uh, model of blunders dictates that there are sometimes forcing moves which are an essential part of delivering the punishment. And here we see after g5, bishop takes d4. Lo and behold, there's a very important forcing move in this position to deliver the punishment. Can you spot it if I give you 10 seconds starting from now? Okay, rook e6 check. It just sidesteps uh, this tactical trap. And we'll check with an engine now. This is the end of the game. Black had to resign here. Let's check the various options. Now, one option you might think, well, bishop f6, the bishop is going back and it's check. doesn't matter that it's check, the king just moves and we're still in this horrendous pin. If black tries to crawl out of the pin with king f7, we just take... No, 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 we don't take there. That would be a mistake taking here. Black would be okay because he takes the rook. In this position, we just celebrate that pin. We just move this and white is winning material in this position. So that's no good. Uh, to play bishop f6, check. Uh, king h5, we have another forcing move, check here. And now in this position, either taking is good or just rook e4 is even better technically. But uh, rook e4 looks safe to have everything protecting d4, attacking d4, and now just taking on d4. And there's no problem, it's peace up. And the other possibility in the final position. Here is king h7. Now, either rook h1 or g6. So g6 check, and we can just take here. No c5 or anything. This b4 has stopped c5 anyway. So let's go back. It was um, it was a game which, which and, and basically fundamentally against this center counter really did expose some problems subtly about the queen. Uh, being able to kick around to collect uh, small positional advantages. And this F3 looks like uh, a dodgy move. But let's let's start doing reference checks actually uh, from here. Now Queen A5 is the most common move in, in the center counter system. Uh, but let's let's start doing a reference check for here for those interested. Okay, so 11,500 games, no, 19,000, nope, nope, 26,000 now. Okay, I'll let it settle. 31,000 with Queen A5. Going back is only 2,981 on my database. Queen D6 is getting popular, actually. It's more popular than going all the way back. It's the second most popular, 7121 games. Kramnik, Gashimov have played this Queen D6. Queen A5, by far the most popular way of playing the system. D4, by far the most popular. So let's skip that. Knight F6. And in this position, is the move Bishop D2 the most popular? Well, actually, this, this is the interesting uh, start uh, from the theoretical point of view. Because the most popular move here, apparently, is Knight 1F3. 8,066 games, not minding any Bishop G4, perhaps. So 8,066 games with knight f3. Bishop c4, 2,880 games. Bishop d2, the third most popular, 1722. Kasparov, Carlson, Kramnik have all played this before. Bishop d2 in this position. And then we see this move, bishop g4. Actually, the most popular move apparently is c6. 1107 games with c6. So the queen's preparing to go back and reach that kind of Kara Khan type solid position. Where hopefully the extra tempo is why it's got not, not meaningful and the c pawn blocked, so the d5 break is not as impressive. Bishop g4 is the second most popular, 246 games. Nakamura has played this before, Boyer, Larson. Third most popular, slightly, is Queen b6 with 230 games. So this is actually the second most popular move, but the most popular by far is c6 with 1100 games, about 11, more than 1100. So bishop g4. Now let's move f3. Actually, this is the second most popular. The most popular move is bishop e2, being played by Karpov, uh, Seltin, and Kisilov before. 
F3 has been played 66 times before. Almazi, Nataf, Dioba, Vajda have played this move F3 before. And it's actually got a good score percentage, 52.3% with F3. It's got a better score percentage than Bishop E2. So how is inviting or avoiding the exchange of light square bishops better? Um, Knight F3, 58 games. So we see F3 and okay we see Bishop D7 and that's slightly unusual as well. Actually Bishop F5 46 games, Bishop H5 12 games, Bishop D going back to D7 is only 7 games. Okay and it's got a low score percentage, the highest score percentage from Black's point of view is going with Bishop F5. So we see Bishop D7 so we're going a little bit off the most trodden territories a side side route here side road bishop c4 is the most common move and it was played in some other moves actually seven games now here we saw queen b6 well the threat is knight d5 which needs to be parried somehow and queen b6 is the most common 12 games queen h5 two games so queen b6 fine knight e2 is the most common 11 games offering the b2 pawn. Now if black took this I just think it will be uh, disastrous in principle. Whoops. Whoa. In principle queen takes b2. And now okay we just take on b7. Simple as that. I think there's, there's some serious threats. Queen b1 is a serious threat now to be dealt with. And if knights, well, this is just getting horrendous. So, so forget taking that poison pawn. It really is poisoned here. Um, now, in this position, did it have to be even shielded? Well, actually, the engine thinks castling is okay. It doesn't doesn't need to bother. Even even here, it's 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 no good. Same sort of thing. So, um, so the bishop went back here. And just to check, haven't we transposed into something? Actually, we have the, there are games here. Well, castling is 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 the most common move here. Bishop b3 has been played twice before. Okay, so there's two games now: Bishop e7, and Bishop d6. Uh, so lower rated players though, not higher than 2500s. Bishop e3 now. Have we transposed back into something? No, we're off. We're off the opening territory. What can we say about this opening from Black's point of view? It looks as though uh, it's a little bit provocative, offering the Queen as a kind of football to play with here. Knight a5 is is not mentioned. Is this an issue which Black's really in a position to benefit from 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 getting uh, this light square bishop? The engine is just indicating bishop d6. So say bishop f2. What would be the benefit of, of this for black compared to the game continuation? Let's have a look. Queen a6 here. Well at least the a file can be used for the queen on a6 without this rook blasting down there. And is it as bad as the game? What could black be looking forward to here? Maybe even casting queen side. Or bishop c6 doesn't seem such a bad position, and it does exploit the bishop in a slightly different way. That the queen has got a parking space here on a6. This might not be such a bad idea, but this knight a5. Maybe one problem with it: the queen is is going to be subject to harassment here uh, after picking up that light square bishop, and white's going to have that blasting a file. So after castles, knight takes b3, a takes. The queen cannot use the parking space a6. It's subject to potential harassment at some point with d5, not here. So bishop e7, knight f4, off the castles, rook e1, white's got the small advantage. I don't think it's threatening d5, it's not the threat. The threat is actually queen e2 or knight d3. Okay. So here d5 can be answerable with bishop c5, I think. And black should be okay, absolutely okay. So that's not a problem at the moment, but it is now. I think now the problem is d5 with c5 contested against bishop c5 in response. So queen d6, 
We see them move bishop f2. What is the threat with bishop f2? Maybe d5 here potentially is a threat because there's a, a nasty pin, well, a nasty exposure of this bishop coming up on the cards with bishop c5, it's skewer, bishop c5, and then to try to win this e7 bishop. So that, that is a threat here. And maybe, you know, black's next move maybe addresses that somewhat. Bishop c6. And we see knight e4, which actually, from an engine point of view, is not actually particularly favoured, um, unless we give it more depth, and maybe it does start favouring it. Is it actually the, the collecting of the duo of pawns here, or, or black's reaction with f5, which made it a lot worse than it needed to be? That's an interesting uh, question. So knight e4, okay, technically we have this aesthetic duo of pawns. Uh, do they necessarily win the position? Black does have the bishop pair. White has created a few more weaknesses. I mean, what if we went with maybe what seems to be a less panicky move, b6? And okay, let's let's accept white playing for c4 in a space of age. It could backfire on the dark square, surely. If we try and get a dark square grip, let white come forward. Is this position terrible? Is it lost? Actually, b6 is also, of course, controlling c5. Not a bad idea in the circumstance. Did it need to be basically as bad as it was? Queen g4. Okay, it looks looks a little bit dangerous with maybe bishop d4 on the cards. We can protect g7. Okay. A computer, of course, is calm without emotion. It doesn't it doesn't do Mr. Bean as as much as us humans. But here. I think maybe the situation has been exacerbated uh, with the c4 and d5 gaining space to try and uh, get rid of the pawn geo with some sort of emergency move, f5. Uh, but yeah, this tactical vulnerability now is is uh, a kind of issue now, a bigger issue than it than it f was by far. It was shielded before. Now tactically, moves like c4 have a greater effect. For d5 and bishop c5, and you might think, well, is the time actually after c4 to play a move like b6, for example? That will that will contest c5. If black tried b6, then it is worse than before. Now this is a little bit worse than before, or maybe significantly worse if the if the white rook is installing itself there. Let, let's forget queen e6 for the moment. That looks quite speculative, although a rook and a bit for a queen it is the best chance, apparently. This this position is actually interesting to consider. Okay, because uh, black would have the d-file. It's, it's an interesting possibility, a computer possibility, uh, inviting the rook e6. But uh, let's let's imagine. The more passive queen d7. Th this is a nice position. F5 is a target. Uh, that this, this starts to go a bit horrible for Black. Okay, it's, it's a horrible position. The bishop's locked out. Um, okay, no need to comment further on that. So, c4. Um, let's see, queen f6. Bishop h4, bishop h4. That's a nice tactical move in this position. Bishop h4. If taking queen d4 check and taking on d3 or taking on h4. So if it takes, we take on d4. Him black's fine. If ta if knight here, we take there. If bishop, we take um, on on d3. But what can white do to bishop h4 here? G3. This this is amazing uh, tactically. Bishop e4. What's going on here? If it takes, check, and it's dangerous for, for White's king here. And here, Rook takes d4. This d file is being made use of resourcefully, and Black's actually better. So this is a dangerous computer move. Bishop h4 in this position. There's even Queen f6, which is apparently even 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 better. D5, Bishop d7. And this this is not as bad as the game continuation anyway. It would seem, in the game continuation, it seems. 
Uh, maybe this is a little bit panicky on the panicky side. Bishop e4. After knight c5, it's uh, getting really dangerous now uh, for black. Clearly, um, black is losing a pawn, it seems, by force. What can he do? He's just committed to losing a pawn here. We see queen g6. Okay, taking. Uh, so now, if queen c2, let's just check that. That would be a horrendous trap blunder. Or is it? e3. No, actually, the bishop's hanging at the end. Even this is not losing for white. It's just not as good as, as the game. Uh, it would just be about equal. <laughs> so even that's not might not be entirely losing for white. Uh, but queen b1 is is the safe way to to pick up that that pawn. So the pawn is picked up. And okay, white plays the king to the center to strengthen d4. Very logical stuff. Can, Dominating the e file, and now trying to get rid of Black's central control by playing for g4, which Black's anticipating here. White's still heading for g4, stomping on c5 as well. So he's reinforcing more and more the d4 uh, pawn from from attack from either the left or the right, from either c5 or the bishop on f6. So the bishop on f6 is the next target. So try and dislodge that bishop. And it's made a great deal worse with rook f8. That's the final uh, nail in the coffin, uh, rook f8. If bishop e7, okay, accepting a miserable position with no, hardly any pressure on d4 now. Let's see, white can play c5 and give up the d5 square even, it seems. Whoops, c5. If if black tries to well e seven is a problem that's why and and what is white going to follow up with king c four and it's incredibly passive g five it's just going to get even worse white's advantage seems to be just increasing rook f five to follow maybe even then rook e five and then d five just break through with d five and get rid of this backward pawn is the plan if given time let's let's have a look at that. So I wonder if just um, rook f e5 is even better. Okay, g6. Black would just be squashed without a fight, surely. Get rid of the bishop. Uh, get rid of the rook over there, and play for d5. D5 is tempting. We'll just exchange off rooks here. Black's just getting completely squashed and losing material now. So this this plan is is to squash black with this g4 g5. It's pretty pretty menacing. So black try to um, set a tactical trap. It seems with rook f8, and that's just the punishment is meted out with forcing moves. In particular, rook e6 check here. Rook takes f8 is harmless, as mentioned. Bishop c5 check, and black will be fine there. That would dream come true for black. But no, the dream is, is shattered. It's cut through with rook e6 check. And now it's completely lost. So yeah, may, maybe in a lot of these games there is there is this idea that um, issues or perceived issues are made worse by one of the players. Uh, and the issue could have been in the opponent's position, is, but they're actually making their own position worse. And then there, there comes to be uh, a forcing move type punishment. And that seems to be evidenced in this example game, uh, where Black um, had some problems which maybe weren't optimally dealt with. But um, you know, it's Anand. What can you do? He's on form. He's having a great tournament. Uh, he's going to be in the lead at this rate if he's not already in the lead off this round. So the world champion is back with a vengeance in this tournament. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.